कुमार सामी नायक है गोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, heart disease rates reaching new levels. Carver boosts Fiji USA trade. And USP grant from Australia approved after conditions met. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Heart disease in the country is reaching heights never seen before. The health ministry says admissions to hospitals relating to heart diseases have dramatically increased in the last three years. While marking World Heart Day today, Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong highlighted that in 2015 there were 502 admissions, 700 in 2016, and the figure rose to 1,279 two years ago. Out of the figure highlighted by Dr. Fung, 12% of the patients had major heart attacks. And out of those that had a major heart attack, something like 10% of them died within 24 hours of being in 24 hours. <coughs> and most of those who, people with heart disease have been found to have a major risk factor. We all know the risk factor, smoking, unhealthy nutrition, obesity, and uh, lack of physical activity, etc. We still see patients with the classical presentation. In practice, it's the chest pain, right, the shortness of breath, the dizziness, and the sweating. That seems to be the four common things that the patients always present with. Dr. Fong says people should seriously consider their health. Heart day to me is a time to help us and those we serve to see clearly, or to clearly see how we can look at our hearts and whether our hearts can be made healthy enough for us to live to the potential that we're supposed to reach. That's the question that we need to start posing to the public. Dr. Fong says the increasing number of such lifestyle diseases also puts pressure on the health system. He adds 82% of the premature deaths in the country are due to non-communicable diseases. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Fijian kava is among the most exported commodity to the United States market, with continuous demand over the years since 2013. Senior Trade and Export Advisor for Investment Fiji, Chanel Naya, says the kava industry is key to our Fijian economy. After noting an increased revenue earned of $22.2 million to the U.S. over the past four years, Josiah Nunga reports a total of 328,371 kilograms of kava was exported last year, an increase of 43,420 kg from 2018. The Fiji Forward Initiative will assist us achieve the forecasted 7% increase of cover export to the U.S. market in the near future. We are receiving a lot of inquiries. We are receiving uh, a lot of farmers who are interested in becoming exporters. So we're hosting uh, capability programs to upskill them to ensure that they receive the best hand uh, advice on how they can become a successful exporter. U.S. Ambassador to Fiji Joseph Sell says the industry is critical to our economy in these times of uncertainty. This is really an uh, example of, uh, I think, opportunities that, uh, that are out there. A uh, very bright future uh, based on the interest of uh, kava uh, uh, growing in the United States, whether it's extracts or beverages. The beverage industry in the United States is uh, exploding, um, and uh, this is a, a niche product that uh, many people are looking for. Uh, as well as health and nutrition. And Fiji Kava reveals the growing demand has inspired them to diversify their products. With ours, we've uh, got a process where we remove all the harmful bacteria, making sure that is fit uh, for human consumption uh, to the very detail according to international standards. So I think that's something that uh, the local market uh, is still coming to terms with. Uh, so we want to preach about that more. That, uh... Meanwhile, the ambassador is reminding local cover dealers to abstain from any unethical way of conducting the business that can halt export and affects 180 cover bars in the U.S. Chosayen Nunga, FBC News. 
Prime Minister Vurenge Mbani Marama will commission more development projects in the Northern Division this week. The Prime Minister began his tour of the division today. Mbani Marama says they want to create investment opportunities for the people of the North. He says the government does not make its decisions while sitting in the office, adding that it is important for leaders to go down to the ground. Mbani Marama reaffirmed government's commitment to serving communities, stressing they will continue to go out and listen to what people have to say since day one our ears have been open to our people we listen to your ideas we take your concerns but we do not stop there we do more than just listen we deliver development that changes lives for the better and more often than not we make those decisions on the ground directly in the communities we are committed to serve. The University of the South Pacific Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Aluwalia revealed that certain requirements and guarantees need to be met in order to receive grants from the Australian government. This comes after Australia stopped the payment of grants to USP following the suspension of the Vice Chancellor earlier this year. Aluwalia was being investigated for alleged material misconduct, but the allegations were dismissed by the USP Council after it came to a clear consensus that there was no indication of misconduct material misconduct. Lena Reese reports. Australia committed to releasing a payment of over $10 million to USP last week, while New Zealand has reassured its commitment. After my suspension, Australia wanted some, some guarantees. We met all those triggers that they wanted, and, uh, and they uh, met with us last week in our regular partnership meeting, have assured us that they will release $7 million. The uplift from New Zealand will be $1.5 million, is what they told us. Professor Aluwalia says their finances were already taking a hit as other member governments struggled to provide their committed grants due to COVID-19. There was a reduction in the overall grant of 21.6 20, million, uh, and so of course that has affected us, but more than that it's been COVID-19 uh, and the impact of COVID-19, and we all know that all 12 of our governments are, uh, you know, finding it, uh, it, it's a difficult time. USP Executive Director Finance Colinio Mboila says the cutoff of grants by the Fijian government may affect the university in the long run. The impact on the Fiji government is basically currently absorbed, so we have not yet moved into a position where we uh, cut wages or cut salaries. Um, that is further down the line if the situation worsens. Alualia says even without the grants, the university will manage until the end of the year. The management has referred the matter to the council. Lena Reese, FBC News. Up ahead, fallen police officers remembered. And football chief shares independence memories. I Radio Fiji 2, Teshki Dharkan. With the sale of rotten meat by supermarkets becoming a recurring issue, the Consumer Council has put a large number of supermarkets under surveillance. Chief Executive Seema Shandel says it is quite concerning that a majority of the supermarkets have been caught selling meat of poor quality. Shandel says a huge amount of meat was condemned recently and warns this will continue. There have been condemnation that has been done to, and, and you know, we work with the municipal council health inspectors to make sure that the condemnation is done in the right manner so that it is totally removed from the sh uh, supermarkets and not put somewhere at the back and then brought back again and resold uh, to the customers. It was an emotional moment for Saraj Naidu during the commemoration of the Fiji Police Remembrance Day. She lost her husband and daughter, who were both police officers within a year, and says their memories will be cherished forever. Naidu's daughter, Shivanjani Naidu, served for eight months after the demise of her father, Rasta Naidu, who served for 24 years. Venina Rakautonga reports. Walking up to lay her wreath, Naidu silently wept, reflecting and appreciating the contribution her two family members have made to the country. I just, I just miss my daughter and my husband. 
because my daughter actually followed the same footprint as the father and I was really proud whenever I visit, visited the station, Balenibu police station, I used to hear by the officers, senior officers that my daughter was holding the father's foot. Naidu believes officers deserve to get the acknowledgement for the work they've done. They are really working hard. They, they should be appreciated. Uh, they are hard work every now and then. And um, they, they are actually working for the public. Uh, so I believe that recommendation should be given to them at all times. Speaker of Parliament Ratu Epeli Nailati Kao says as officers perform their daily duties in looking after the public, they should also be aware of their personal health. Non-communicable diseases is a worrying trend in the force. The increasing demands of policing and emerging challenges requires the necessary physical and psychological support to personnel. Non-communicable disease continues to be the leading cause of death among police officers. Last year alone, the force lost 20. Venina Rakotonga, FBC News. Minister for Forestry, Osea Nangamu, has commended the villages of Malamalo and Nandronga for their enthusiasm towards the 30 million trees in 15 years initiative. The ministry embarked on this ambitious project early last year and it planted 2.3 million trees so far. This week, the minister is touring Nahoho, Malomalo and Sana Sana villages in Nandronga to create awareness on the initiative. Nangamu says the district of Malomalo, which comprises of seven villages, are very supportive. The interest from uh, the community, we want to participate and they have uh, mentioned during our consultation uh, there are uh, plans for them to work with the Ministry of Forestry or Government uh, in uh, planting trees to achieve our target in 15 years. While thousands of Fijians gathered at Suva's Alba Park on 10th October 1970, those who could not make it remained connected in their homes, work and schools through live broadcast on radio. Fiji Football Chief Executive Muhammad Yusuf was only 12 years old and remembers celebrating the event in his school in Singatoka. Apenisa Wangarindovu has his story. Muhammad Yusuf says the closest link to Suva was radio and the teachers constantly briefed them about the events leading up to the independence. So before the event, uh, there a lot of uh, hype given by teachers. Every class, uh, they would be told in the morning that something big is coming. Fiji is going to be an independent nation. So it didn't really kick us well uh, at that time. Now we realize that how important that event was. Uh. He says there was a lot of excitement among the students. Yusuf says it was ensured that no one felt left out during this historic event. The government of the day uh, ensured every uh, kids, uh, every child received a Fijian flag, eh? a small uh, noble brand of blue. So around midday, the schools were uh, closed, everybody out in the assembly. Uh, the former Naindovi primary school student recalls how they sang the national anthem. They were uh, cassette, uh, cassette played on the recorders the, uh, of the Fijian anthem, you know. So at that time, not, not everybody knew how to, how to sing, but everybody was listening and trying to sing, but later on, that became a norm in schools, eh, the Fijian National Anthem. Yusuf adds this was a life-changing event. And the announcers would say what is about to happen, uh, what uh, the flag raising started. So uh, all that was, was to, uh, told to us. You know, so everybody paid a huge attention to what was happening. Uh, it, it was a big uh, life-changing event uh, for all of us. The Fiji FA chief executive confirms they will mark the Fiji Day celebrations on October 10th as it coincides with the court's IDC final. Apenisawa Grandobu, FBC News. And Apenisa joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up.
FNPF warns against COVID-19 withdrawal fraud and in growing Fiji villager venture into million dollar scheme. Stay with us. Pula nadang gua prosalan kerse, gua erkeraki. The televisi on varong na radio Fiji One, nandom ibit. Radio Fiji One, nandom ibit. Fiji National Provident Fund has warned that it will take action against those COVID-19 member withdrawals identified to be falsified. This warning is also directed to employers and employer representatives. The fund is urging members and employers to refrain from engaging in such fraudulent activity. It says anyone found engaging in such practices will have to face the law. Meanwhile, the fraud today released the payment for phase two Round two, cycle three. These funds are for members who have applied for and had their applications approved up until September 25th. China's auto market has rebounded smartly in recent months as a rare in-person trade show was dominated by talk of recovery in the world's biggest car market. But for all the glitz and uh, good cheer at this year's show, it's still a tough time. Sharon from HFC Bank joins us now with the, with the latest from the money market. The U.S. dollar was steady against a basket of currencies as traders await the first U.S. presidential election debate tomorrow. The debate between Democrat Joe Biden and Republican Donald Trump will be a key driver for markets this week. However, traders are also braced for a slew of data to gauge the health of the world's biggest economy ahead of their election, including consumer confidence, a manufacturing survey, consumer data, a jobs report and their GDP stats. Elsewhere, the pound sterling outperformed other currencies, extending overnight gains. This was on hope for a Brexit trade deal as the EU and Britain kicked off a decisive week of talks. And as Europe struggles with a surge in new COVID-19 infections, traders will be looking for any impact on the region's economic recovery from September figures for Eurozone consumer confidence and industrial sentiment data. And that's all from your HFC Bank for now. Kunaka. Looking at today's local exchange rates as set early this morning, the Fiji dollar was generally on the rise today, gaining ground on the Chinese yuan and the U.S. greenback, as well as the New Zealand dollar, the PNG Kina and the Japanese yen. Commodity prices were rising. The price of oil rose about $40 a barrel. Gold was higher at $1,891 per ounce and silver gained a dollar to $2,285 per ounce. Over 20 young people of Nasolo village in Boa have embarked on a million-dollar business scheme through Kava farming. Turang Nikoro Chonembureta says they are engaging youth and school leavers to join the project in a bid to reach their target of planting 50,000 Kava seedlings by year-end. He says they only managed to save 12,000 Yangona plants following the tropical cyclone Winston in 2016. After 2016, we never backed down. We have so far planted 40,000 Yangona and we'll add another 10,000 this year to reach our 50,000 Yangona plants target. This year, we'll ensure we have us in 2024 so we can build 51 houses and that is part of our five-year development plan. <laughs> That's all from business tonight. Jamie joins you next with sports. Nakapinisa and good evening in sports tonight. Daniela Sunrungu tells of Mara Seven's experience. And Nandi football faces major setback. We send more coming up. Bula FM, number two and a Bula FM, number two and The Fiji Rugby Union will officially begin drug tests on its players at the Skipper Cup competition this weekend. After a series of discussions with World Rugby, the union has been given the green light to sanction players for any use of illegal substances under World Rugby guidelines. The Oceania Regional Anti-Doping Organization will conduct the tests. FRU Chief Executive John O'Connor says any players who test positive will be dealt with under the World Rugby regulations. 
the FRU signed agreement uh, and we hope to, we've advised the unions uh, this morning that uh, drug testing will commence uh, this, uh, this week uh, as part of our agreement uh, the people who do the drug test, the Orado will identify matches and then we'll identify two or three players from the matches based on their numbers uh, to be tested in the weekend. Eh? In form, Suva open side flanker Taniela Sanrungu has proven he also has what it takes to excel in sevens. The talented 20-year-old took a break from the Skipper Cup competition last week to play with the FDS Barbarian Brothers at the Mara Sevens and did not disappoint. Karlaini Tavi has more. Taniela Sanrungu. Dubbed as the White Shark, Sandrungu did not disappoint as he helped his side reach the semi-finals where they bowed out to Police White. Playing alongside the champion, uh, Police White, Police Blue, uh, it's a very good uh, experience. Uh, most of them are experienced players and uh, former teachers. Playing, playing uh, against them is a very good experience. Sandrungu says rubbing shoulders with some of the best in sevens rugby has been an overwhelming experience. Playing alongside uh, P2I, we know him very well. Uh, it's very good uh, leadership. Uh, so most of us uh, consist of young boys and uh, us a place. Suva will work on his backline before heading into the Skipper Cup clash against the level this week. A lot of uh, uh, loopholes uh, that uh, Nandi team uh, took advantage of and I think it's in the, 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 the back line and uh, we're looking at also in improving uh, the performance of our um, uh, eight uh, forwards uh, and, and that's, that's probably where the coaches uh, will be uh, spending a lot of time on. Sundrungu and the Suva side will host a level at ANZ Stadium in Suva on Friday. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sport. Madhuata Rugby is getting closer to its aim of promotion to the Skipper Cup competition. The side defeating the Rove 49-24 in round 6 of the Northern Vanua Division last week to book a spot in the Vodafone Vanua Championship quarterfinals. Karlaini Tavi with this report. The Madhuata players knew what was at stake last week and played according to the game plan to ensure the win. Because uh, we were sitting uh, below Mbua in the points table, and uh, we decided to come out with a game plan that suited us the most. So we utilized it and uh, we came up with uh, 49 points. The team is now calling for the support of the Vanua at this week's clash. We, we are calling on the support of the people of Domotelevu to come and support the team. Because uh, maybe in a week's time or after two weeks we are going to Vitilevu. So we need their support there too. Uh, it's about the team and it's a Vanua based franchise. We, we need the full support. As for the the Count Rove team, head coach Timodi Vakanranu is proud of how far the team has come. The, you know, they, 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 play, they play good and clean rugby. Uh, that's, that's the way I saw them. Uh, uh, into, you know, into rough play or aggressiveness like that, it, it, it's like it's indiscipline to them. You know? We play good discipline rugby. And clean. Mother Water will play Northland this week in the quarterfinals of the Vodafone Vanua Challenge. Karle Nitavi, FBC Sports. The Flo Valves Super Football side will play the opening match of the Premier Division in the Courts Inter District Championship. The hosts take on Nasiru in their first group match, 12.30 p.m. next Tuesday. A few changes have been made to the traditional format of holding tournaments, which usually sees the host team play the last match of the day. We have decided to move away from the norm uh, and in view of... Uh, Trying to, because it's a working day as well, we're trying to put up a game that's going to attract a huge uh, public support, crowd, uh, television viewers, etc. when it is late. And we want uh, the uh, match after the opening ceremony by the Honorable Prime Minister to be the feature match of the day. The Nandi football team will be out to restore lost glory at the court's inter-district championship. The Jet Setters came close in 2015 but lost 2-0 to Ba in the final. They last won the covered the title 18 years ago. Felipe Naikaso has more. The Nandi side has identified a number of areas they have to work on ahead of the IDC in Suva. 
Uh, so far, w w the players are uh, focusing on uh, the, the formations. They will be playing against the three teams that uh, are in our pool and what they are going to do in the game. So the approach by the players are very good. They also suffered a major setback ahead of the tournament as captain Ivanes Warren Swami has been ruled out due to an injury. So, but we have equally good players uh, there. We got Rahul there for Warren, but for surely Warren will be missed in the game. But we will try our best. So far, I'm placed in the team. Uh, some of them, first time they're playing the tournament. Uh, also, most of our uh, uh, players uh, got injury. The Jet Setters have also won the IDC title six times. The tournament will be held at the ANZ Stadium in Suva from the 6th to the 11th of next month. Philip and Icaso, FBC Sports. Being the first football player from the village of Dautata Mbautai Levu comes with huge expectations for 26-year-old Epeli Lorni Deva. The former national goalkeeper started playing football when he was 9 and 17 years on. He still enjoys the game he fell in love with as a child. Dali Matera Kula reports. Epeli Lonidava's love for football began at an early age. I attended uh, St. Augustine Public School and I started my football then. Uh, since I was in the under 9 grade and then moved to the under 10 and moved to the Lambasa Primary Soccer Team. His passion for the sport got a boost when he joined Lambasa Sangam College. I continued my soccer there and my school career, education, then went for the Fiji under-20 squad where we to the New Zealand for the um, World Cup qualifiers. Lonnie Deva joined Lambasa football in 2009 before moving to Rawa in 2012. Now he is part of the Nesinu side and coach Tangi Vonalangi says his inclusion adds depth to the team. We have uh, quality players that also can match them and uh, we hope to give uh, our three uh, uh, the three teams in Apula, good game. Loni Deva will make his debut for Nesinu in the court's IDC, which begins next month. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. Liverpool's new signing, Diogo Jota, grabbed a home debut goal as the champions beat Arsenal 3-1 in the Premier League this morning. The Reds demonstrated their determination to retain an iron grip on their Premier League crown by coming from behind to record an impressive victory. In play of the day, Spain's 12-time champion Rafael Nadal encountered few problems as he started the French Open with a three-set win over Belarusian Igor Garizmov. Nadal is seeded second behind Serbia's world number one Novak Djokovic and says the rearranged tournament will provide the toughest conditions yet for him. But this was not the case for his first match with plays like this laying the platform for an opening win. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in the world of the weird and wonderful, a Japanese restaurant is using robots to provide food services. Details after the break. Bula FM, number two and series. Bula FM, number two and series. The U.S. judge in Washington has temporarily blocked a Trump administration order. The order was set to bar Apple and Alphabet's Google from offering Chinese-owned short video sharing app TikTok for download. And Andy joins us now with the latest in weather. Good evening and welcome to the weather world. The weather was changeable and it really was not settled. So again, we're looking at rain moving forward and we can expect to see a wet finish. Now checking the other centers out in the west, do carry that rain jacket with you as there is potential showers up tonight. Eastwards from Pak Habarusuva, rain clouds surrounded the area. There is an absolute chance for showers tonight. And up north, not spared by rain as well, the night will be so much cooler. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. 
Turning to the tides, low tide at 11.17 p.m. with high tide at 5.24 p.m. Sunrise will be at 5.49. For tomorrow, the low pressure system has situated itself evenly, so rain is highly likely in most areas. Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be the coolest at 18 degrees. And with all that rain, Ba will also be cool at 19 degrees. And looking further on to Thursday, there is no clear spells from what I'm seeing for now. That means you still have to carry your umbrellas. Well, that's all the weather from my side. Jackie has more latest updates next. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji Impulse, we asked, what do you think about the final term of school ending a week out from Christmas? It's a really good thing with all the time lost. They can adjust after the one week break last week. It's great. Students can catch up on their work for the year, especially after the long time spent at home. A good idea by the Ministry of Education to extend this school hour, school days because already we are suffering from COVID-19. It will benefit the students because they've spent more time during the lockdown at home. Recapping the main stories, Fulton Night, heart disease rates reaching new levels. Carbo boost Fiji USA trade. And USP grant from Australia approved after conditions met. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. A poll question we're asking, will it be the toughest school term to date for students? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, this photo was captured at the Lautoka Fishing Wharf by Fane Unuisi Lindua. Send us newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, by Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I stay safe. Bye for now. By today, Radio Fiji, 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 Radio Fiji